Have you ever wondered what everything is down there? Well, I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today I'm gonna be explaining everything you need to know about male anatomy. If you're new here, I make new videos every Monday and Friday, sharing content that regards to urologic health, bladder health, sexual health, and so much more. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe and share this channel with your friends. A special thanks to our sponsor for today, Let's Get Checked, a leader of at-home testing kits. When you think about male anatomy, we're going to talk about two different kinds of genitalia. There is external genitalia, which is basically the things you see, and internal genitalia are the things that are on the inside of the body that help with everything that the male genitalia needs to do. There are two major functions of the male genitalia. One is for reproduction, so to create healthy, productive sperm that can then fertilize an egg and create babies, and two is to urinate. And so we're going to start by talking about the penis. Everyone knows where the penis is, what it looks like, but let's talk about the parts of the penis and what exactly it entails. So within the penis, there's obviously the erectile tissue. Those are basically two cylindrical structures on either side that tend to engorge with blood when you are having an erection. These are called corpora cavernosa. Below that, on the bottom, or what we call the ventral side of the penis, you'll see the urethra, or the pee tube from which pee comes from. Around the urethra, there's also an erectile tissue called the corpora spongiosum. And this corpora spongiosum that goes around the pee tube actually widens to become the head of the penis. And the glans penis has a few different parts associated with it as well. There's the corona, or the ridge of the head of the penis, and this forms a V at the bottom of the penis, which you can see, and sometimes it's attached to what's called a frenulum or a band of tissue that connects the glands to the penis shaft itself. And the glans penis and the frenulum both have lots and lots of nerve endings and are very much involved in ejaculation and essentially sometimes also abnormalities and sensation have been linked to premature ejaculation, which I've talked about in videos before. Also in uncircumcised men, you'll have a prepuce, which is essentially the foreskin that covers the glans penis. And this ultimately when men get an erection gets stretched alongside the corporal bodies which get filled with blood like a sponge causing this firm rigid erection. This allows the penis to then be engorged and firm enough for penetrative intercourse. And that's essentially the function of the penis to have penetrative intercourse and deliver sperm and semen to the vaginal canal to allow eventual fertilization. Interestingly, a lot of people talk about the frenulum, like what is the actual function of the frenulum? So the frenulum does have quite a bit of nerve tissue, which attaches to the foreskin itself. And when you get an erection, if you are an uncircumcised man, that foreskin will then stretch and it will pull tension on the frenulum. Some very small studies have looked at the length of the frenulum and see if it correlates with the degree of premature ejaculation a male experiences with the thought that maybe this stretch, when it reaches this significant tension during erection, if it's shorter, that men will ejaculate sooner because that will limit the stretch of the penis and trigger the spinal ejaculatory center to then ejaculate and cause reduction of the erectile tissue and back to normal size. The second part of the external genitalia is the scrotum. And the scrotum is essentially the skin around the testicles. And it serves two very important functions. One is it protects the testicles, but two, obviously men's testicles hang outside their body. And this is because for optimal sperm production, the temperature of the testicles needs to be slightly lower than body temperature. And this is exactly why testicles are actually outside the male's body rather than internal like female ovaries. And that brings us to the testicles and the testicles form testosterone. And testosterone, as you know, is vital for reproduction and many other functions in the male body, including libido with intercourse, cognitive function, the ability to build muscle, and so much more. Unfortunately, low testosterone is becoming more and more common today. So that brings us to our sponsor, Let's Get Checked. Let's Get Checked is a worldwide leader in at-home tests. Their male hormone test kit allows you to check testosterone levels from the comfort of your very own home. You can deliver a testing kit just like this that's delivered to your home with a next day delivery in discreet packaging so no one needs to know what you're ordering. They give you very clear instructions on how to collect your sample and how to return your sample seamlessly. After your sample gets sent to the laboratory, it gets checked and you get results into your confidential inbox within two to five business days. 
all the results are reviewed by a clinician of the Let's Get Checked team and a nurse may call you with your results. And the best part about it is the Let's Get Checked laboratories are approved by CLIA and CAP accreditation, which is the highest level of accreditation you can achieve as a laboratory. So you can rest assured that you're getting the best possible test. So if you want to get your testosterone checked or a number of other tests available on Let's Get Checked, make sure you check out the link in my description below for 30% off your purchase. So getting back to male anatomy again, testosterone is produced in the testicles in particular cells called Leydig cells. These Leydig cells create testosterone and they mature within the testicle themselves and move to the epididymis. The epididymis is a cord-like structure that sits on the top and side of your testicle. So if you examine your testicle, which I encourage you to do each and every month because testicular cancer can affect all men, but most often younger men who mostly don't have to worry about other types of cancer, cancer. So make sure you examine your testicle each and every month, feel the testicle, feel the epididymis, know what your normal testicle feels like. So if you feel something abnormal, you can go get it checked out super easily. Just get an ultrasound and talk to your doctor and just make sure it's nothing serious because testicular cancer is super treatable. If you want to learn more about testicular cancer, make sure you check out my video that I made before with ChatterDocs. So once they're in the epididymis, they stay there until sexual arousal occurs. Once arousal occurs, those sperm are moved to another tubular structure called the vas deferens. And you may have heard of the vas deferens before because that's the structure that's cut during a vasectomy. If you're considering a vasectomy or want to learn more about that procedure, make sure you check out my video about that. Once aroused, the sperm then moves to the vas deferens. And the vas deferens is a very long structure. It's about 30 centimeters long. As the vas deferens gets closer to the prostate, which is the next organ we're going to talk about, the vas becomes a little bit more dilated and tortuous, and then it combines with the seminal vesicles into the ejaculatory duct. And this duct enters into the P-tube near the prostate in an area called the prostatic urethra. So to summarize, the vas is bringing the sperm from the testicles into the ejaculate. Then the seminal vesicles are also another structure that combines fluid to the ejaculate to make semen. And the seminal vesicles essentially are sac-like structures that sit sort of behind the prostate underneath the bladder. And these hold fluid. All this fluid together with the sperm itself will go out the ejaculatory duct during ejaculation to then create semen. The seminal vesicles contribute about 70% of the semen volume. So a lot of guys wonder if they have a low ejaculate volume, does that mean they're not making enough sperm? That's not necessarily true. The seminal vesicles contribute a large portion of fluid into the sperm itself. They include multiple components, including fructose, which provides energy to the sperm, as well as fluid that makes the semen alkaline because the vagina is acidic. And so in order for those sperm to survive in that environment, they need to have an alkaline or more basic pH. There's also other things that provide protection to the sperm itself, as well as prostaglandins or hormones that try to limit the female's immune response to sperm itself. The prostate gland is a walnut-shaped organ that sits behind the bladder that also produces fluid that's released during ejaculation. This forms about 10 to 20% of the fluid that's ejaculated and includes things that helps make sperm move better in the fluid so they can actually reach the egg when they're trying to fertilize it. And so lastly, the seminal vesicles and the vas deferens link into the ejaculatory ducts. And these are essentially a passageway for the seminal fluid, the prostate fluid, and the sperm to combine and form what you see as semen. And lastly, of course, in another important part of genitalia is the urethra or the P-tube. So during ejaculation, obviously the urethra offers a way for semen to get out of the body, but when you're not ejaculating or having reproductive function, that same tube allows you to urinate. And so that's exactly all the structures that men have as part of their genital tract. I hope you guys found this helpful and if you feel like there's other components of just basic sexual education that you never learned and you want to learn about, comment below, let me know. And as always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.